Welcome to Swarm of Comics. I'm Randy, your handsome and humble host. Um, today we're going to talk about a number of things. The first thing I'm going to start with is I have a new microphone. I've spent uh, the incredible sum of $29 for a microphone recommended by another page that I subscribe to called Delightfully Dysfunctional, which has wonderful blogs on there from Lana, and I'm hoping she gets back to those. Um, but she had a great uh, recommendation for a microphone. So I'm trying this out. Hopefully it sounds better than it did before. Um, another one of my subscribers mentioned to me that um, when I would move away from the microphone doing this and that to put down a comic, I would trail off and you couldn't hear everything I was saying. So this is a test to see if that microphone is working well. So that's the first thing. The second thing is that uh, the show is going to be about covers. Um, but before that, the show is also going to be about me not moving around in my chair like this, doing a nervous wiggling. As I watch my video back, which I don't really want to do, but sometimes I have to, I notice that. So I'm going to try and not do that. So I guess that's a tip from a brand new YouTuber to other people starting. Don't do this the whole time. Don't bounce your knee, I guess, and try and look at the camera. Baton Rouge, Cindy Brady, Sandy Baton Rouge, stare at the camera. So when talking about covers, I mentioned in another video about covers being a big draw for comic book collectors. And these days, the industry is definitely very strong with the idea of cover art. We're not necessarily super concerned uh, with content in older books and collectible books. Um, covers are what it's all about. And I know that covers have always been the draw. When you were in the old days, when it was a, the comics were at the pharmacy or the, the drugstore or whatever, you know, you'd see them on a rack. You went for something that was that popped. But what do you want to put in a, a slab? What do you want to collect forever? What do you want to display? And there's a lot of trends out there now that I've noticed, again, as I dive deeper into this, uh, and these covers, um, a lot of them aren't the obvious covers that we all know and love and the historic covers. People are going for stuff. They're going for the, the bondage covers. Um, a book I recently picked up was Wonder Woman 199. And uh, if I did any research whatsoever, I would tell you the cover artist, but look up Wonder Woman 199. Look up Wonder Woman 200. It was when Wonder Woman had no powers and she was mod and she was hip and she was in mini skirts and boots. And she was more like a James Bond going on adventures. But these covers have Wonder Woman, uh, Diana Prince, it was really about Diana Prince, in bondage and there's some evil baddie that's about to 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 get her um and so bondage covers are big covers which always to go back to i pretty much when you know comics started the old pulps the shadow the spider um all the detective novels uh, you know always have a the damsel in distress and that's a, a big draw for people those bondage covers um another big type of cover is skulls they just people love skulls this classic pre-code horror or old pulps you have skulls on that cover it's a big draw um uh and people like unusual covers I, people like a lot of solid colors as well that aren't as busy um, I'll give one example. If you actually look back there, you'll see um, Secrets of Haunted House, and that's a Bernie Wrightson color, cover, very Halloween-y. Uh, hopefully you can see it pretty good, but it's got that whole blacked out. Um, and although it's a good cover, next to it, the Fantastic Four, it's just busy. It's a superhero book. It's got lots of stuff going on. But a lot of people like these very clean covers. Um, they love the old 1940s war books where everybody's beating up Hitler. Everybody beat up Hitler. They were beating up Hitler before the United States was even in World War II. Um, as you probably know, look at Captain America number one is the infamous cover of you know Captain America punching out Hitler. But I think that was 1941. Um, we weren't even in the war yet. Pearl Harbor hadn't happened or anything like that. So again, I've done no research at all and I don't care to. Um, it sounds like more work than it's worth doing. So feel free to correct me in the comments or chime in if you have any thoughts on that. So going on for me, what I'm finding is my comic book collecting, and I don't know, it must be my accent of where I'm from, but I don't know how comic book collecting all turns into one word. Lunch Money Comics does that too. I don't know his name, but Lunch Money Comic Books is also from the same area in the Northeast New England I'm from. And it turns into one word, comic book collecting. It's not, it's comic book collecting. And maybe I need to have better diction and pronunciation, but my comic book collecting has sort of branched out into these really cool covers. Maybe I don't love the character. Maybe I've never even heard the book before. But if I find something visually pleasing, 
that I think would look good displayed on a wall or in a mylar or in a slab or anything like that. I'm going to grab it. I'm going to show a couple of books too. That's cool. Um, a lot of the books that I have that I love the covers are off uh, to get graded at CGC, but this was a good sampling of new books out there. So I am keeping the chair swiveling to a minimum here. I'm mostly looking at myself on the screen to make sure I don't look like an idiot. Um, and I, again, uh, hair and makeup people are still on vacation. So I'm still going to look like this. And uh, I got enough bags under my eyes to uh, bring home a whole uh, batch of new comic books. But, um, and speaking of covers, I'm, I'm even wearing one on a shirt here. This is a G.I. Joe, the infamous um, silent issue, uh, issue 21, back from when I was a kid. I bought this new when it came out. I still have my copy. And that cover is just stunning. I should lean back and let you see me more. I suck it in. But that's just a visually stunning cover. There's not a lot of word balloons. There's not a lot going on. Just amazing cover. Um, and I'm going to talk about this book and some other um, classic nostalgia books in a different video. But um, I'm going to go through a couple of books here and just so you can see them. And maybe you'd be interested. Maybe you've never heard of them. Maybe you want to chase them down. Um, the first book I want to talk about here, which is a great cover. And I bought this specifically for the cover. This is a book from Australia. I think from the 1950s. It's called The Masked Marvel. Tell me that's not the goofiest, craziest, weirdest cover. I don't know. He's wearing a cape. I mean, it's clearly must be a ripoff of, you know, the original Ghost Rider from 1950. Um, so the interesting thing about the book is it's wafer thin. It probably doesn't have 10 pages, which is very unusual for back then. And it's black and white inside. And I just love this cover, the glare of it. So I want to get this slabbed, although we're probably going to be worth I'm probably going to be losing money on that, but again, I'm not a comic book flipper, but The Masked Marvel, someone even written on it. You can see, as soon as I get a better camera, you see it, but it says July, August, 1954. And apparently it's The Masked Marvel, very poorly hand-drawn. Like they didn't even try and get a graphic designer to make that straight or anything like that. But I absolutely love this. It's the world famous story that I've never heard of, but The Masked Marvel, super cool cover that I love. So next book I want to show is, don't, my desk is a mess. Luckily the camera doesn't see my desk. Um, the next video that I want to talk about, a video I want to talk about, the next, uh, I don't have any editing software yet, although another YouTuber, a joy of precision. If you like uh, videos about sports cards and metal machining, go watch my friend Max Phillips on his channel. Um, uh, joy of precision. I think that's what it is. Um, but uh, anyway, um, he has uh, given me some editing software tips and uh, software to use. So I'm going to do that. So eventually I'll edit out like thing me dropping things off of my desk. But for now, this is a book that I actually learned about from Walt Simonson, who, if you're watching this video and you like comics, you know who Walt Simonson is, I don't know what to tell you. But he was looking for information about this book and he had posted on his Facebook page, and I hadn't heard of it, and I looked at it. It's based on a movie, I think, Land of the Unknown. It is one of the um, the Dell, uh, I think they call them the four-color books. You know, They were avoiding the Comics Code Authority by putting out books, because I think this is 1957. They were putting out books that were based on movies and TV shows and books, so they could avoid. You'll notice there's no Comic Code Authority on this from a book from 19. 57. So fun little fact from Dell. So this cover is absolutely fantastic. But what this book is known for is the artist. I'm going to say this two different ways. I my whole life called him Alex Toth, T-O-T-H. But I recently heard Comic Tropes. You should go follow Comic Tropes. Again, he's a little dramatic and he's a little, you know, over dramatic for a comic book, talking about comic books. But he's got a pretty good channel and hopefully he never sees this and doesn't do a mean video about me but he calls him alex toth and that absolutely could be how you pronounce it i think alex toth was originally of some type of eastern european descent and maybe that's how they pronounced it but alex toth you know from things like space ghost and the Hanna barbera cartoons and doing a lot of designs all the way up until his death i think he was still designing stuff for um the um, animation and movie industry which it turns out you know was much more profitable for people and artists back then. So anyway, this is a beautiful book, not his cover, a painted cover, but this is in beautiful shape and I want to get this done too. Like even if it wasn't an Alex Toth book, I just love that from that logo to even the little Dell, like, you know, 
um, trade dress up here. Um, it's just very subtle, and I like that that Dell. So anyway, this is a great book, Land of the Unknown. Probably talk too much about that, but I'm hoping this book comes in like a seven or eight or something like that. So here's another book. I'm not a DC guy. I don't really own any DC comics. I don't think there's any behind me besides Secrets of Haunted House. Um, but this period that DC had in the late 60s, you know, the Silver Age came with DC and then Marvel basically took it over. And DC, in my opinion, a lot of this is just my opinion of what I've observed. Um, again, feel free to correct me. But DC started stepping up post Adam West, Burt Ward, Batman. They really went for this different look again i talked about wonder woman diana prince she was a, james bond she was not superhero punching out villains in her metal bikini you know um and a lot of the books started getting these great cover artists and more serious stuff and more deep and dark stuff um and this is one i was never much of a fan i don't even say i made fun of him but this is a book aquaman and this is aquaman number 42 probably from 1968 70 something like this and this cover is absolutely stunning. I saw this cover again, watching the channel, other YouTubers talking. It could have been Bronzeville Comics, Jim at Bronzeville. And, um, um, but look, just the Aquaman logo here in the, the, the rocks under the water. And even the way they did the, the Aquaman title at the top, Aquaman, Aquaman. All I can think of is uh, um, all the typo negative albums that like to, to word everything like this. And of course, you've got Black Manta on there. So this is just a fantastic cover. If, if you don't have this book or if you've never seen this book, I hope you get this because this is a beautiful book. Um, and going up in value, these books going up in value, those Wonder Womans from that era are going up, these Aquamans are going up, the, the Spectres are going up and things like that. Um, so anyway, this was a cool book, not super expensive. I got a raw copy. I'm hoping this comes in at a six, seven. And uh, the artist is named Cardi. His last name is Cardi. It's down here. Can't remember first name, did no research. I really should can maybe do some research, do a script and go through, but I like riffing here. I like just talking about stuff like I would my friends. You guys are all my friends. You guys are my friends, right? You're my friends. We're going to talk about comic books. So anyway, let's talk about Another cool cover here. I'll get through these faster. We don't want this video. I, I don't know if my computer has enough space to hold videos this big. So this is a great cover. I picked this up, book up super cheap. Um, it was actually like $40. It didn't matter. I just loved it. And this is Blue Beetle number 39. I don't know what is going on here. Blue Beetle smiling and flying over a giant inflated flying police officer. And there's kids, there's kids playing on him and he's sweating and blowing out breath. Oh, who even knows what is going on here? Can anybody, somebody explain this to me? Um, and I do like the Blue Beetle. I actually had a Blue Beetle shirt on yesterday. Um, this is the old original Blue Beetle. Of course, he came back as um, Ted Cord, and then he came back again as the new guy, um, Jaime the Reyes, I think, that they made the movie out of. But I like this old classic goofy stuff. I went to get this book graded, and my comic presser was pressing everything, Tom Anderson. Um, again, I still haven't posted any of his information. He hasn't given me the go-ahead, but he's a great guy. I think he's busy doing all of my books and does not have time for you. But he said that the centerfold was detached in this. And I just didn't feel like it was worth spending that money because if I paid 40 bucks for the book, I mean, it's going to come back qualified maybe, or I don't know. What it's, maybe it would but universal, but it wasn't worth slabbing, but I still think it's a beautiful book. So Blue Beetle. Um, this book, again, I didn't pay a lot for this either. This was probably 30 or $40. Another Dell comic. This cover is just absolutely stunning. Uh, again, I'm probably not even, this is from 1953. This is Flash Gordon number two. And I probably paid $30 for it. It needs a good press. So Tom, you're going to need to press this for me. But look at that cover. I wish my camera was better and you could see. I'm working on a camera, guys. I wish you could see the colors. Maybe if I step back. Boom, step back, you can see a little bit, getting that sunlight. Look at that. It's not busy, no word balloons, just a beautiful painted cover. Flash Gordon number two, 1953, Dell Comics. So another stunning one. Put that mm -hmm. behind me on there. It doesn't matter whether it's next to a $3,000 book and this was 40. This is, this is just a stunning book. And that's what I'm looking for when I'm collecting. I'm looking for what is some really beautiful visual stuff? Do I need to read this story? No, probably not. I mean, it's probably doesn't hold up well and probably better if it was the 1950s and I was seven years old. But 
as an old person now in modern age, I probably won't get much out of it. Um, but that's a fantastic book. This is another book that I picked up at my local comic shop. I mentioned him before. It's the Comic Book Palace in Haverhill, Massachusetts. Glenn is the owner. He has his own channel. Maybe if you just uh, search on YouTube for the Comic Palace, you'll find it. I'm in some of his videos talking about stuff. And maybe that's why I decided to do this. We talk about everything from, you know, colorists being gone, like hand coloring in comics. Where did those people go? Um, to just talking about, you know, trends and artists and stuff. So go look up Glenn um, and see his page and look at his videos when he's filming just his customers and talking about stuff. But he had this book. I think it's in decent shape, maybe a five or a six. And another trend I talked about, I didn't talk about that uh, when I, as I was talking about trends earlier about bondage covers, skull covers, pre-code horror covers. Another trend is people seem to love, collectors seem to love nuclear war, nuclear explosions, bombs, and everything like that. And this falls under, it's called Atom Age Combat and submarine is shooting missiles and there's a nuclear bomb in the background. So Comics Code Authority, so it's post 1955. My guess is probably 1957. It's from Fago Publications or Fago. I don't know anymore. Toth, Toth. Somebody tell me how to pronounce things. But this book, uh, I think he wanted a hundred for it, but he gave me a good price. I probably picked it up for like 50 or 60 bucks or something like that. And I'm definitely gonna get this graded because there's almost none that I've seen on the um, heritage auctions uh, history and they seem to go for decent money but the cover's just cool i mean it's a submarine at heart i'm still going to be an eight-year-old boy who i mean it's a submarine and bombs and missiles i, I just love that stuff so super cool cut but back to i'm collecting this but i've never heard of it before and i love it so actually adam age combat number one i don't like the cover i actually like issue number two i i if i had a choice to buy them I would buy this versus number one, even if number one was going to be worth money. But So that's a cool one. Moving on. Again, I mentioned this character earlier, and I've loved this character since I was a young. And they did, I picked up some old, ratty 1970s books. And then they did, a, in the 19, early, mid-1980s, they put it out um, a new series. They keep giving him his own series, and it never really sells, and they've restarted a million times. But it is The Spectre. And this is another Cardi cover which I had uh, the same artist from the uh, Aquaman. Let me double check. Eh, his names are not on there, but I bet it's a Cardi cover. Dare you look into the eyes of the specter. Like how beautiful is that book? That's just stunning. I'm going to get this one slapped too. This one looks like in really nice shape. Doesn't even have any spine ticks. That's pretty amazing. So that's just a stunning cover. I love it. I can't wait to find some place to display it. Uh, this book isn't even that old of a book. Um, another thing people like, Skulls, Bondage, Punching Nazis, um, Pre-Code Horror Stuff, Nuclear Bombs. Another type of cover people like is they love Satan on the covers. And there's a book called Cannonball um, that I want a copy of, but it keeps being too expensive in my taste. But look for an old 1950 books, 50s book called Cannonball. I don't know what issue it is, but it's got this amazing Satan on the cover. Um, the 19... 70s when the commerce code authority started lightening up on what you could put on covers vampires wall werewolves satan anything like that as long as it wasn't like people's heads being cut off and people being tortured um needles being stuck in their eye that people love covers or panels with like needles gonna be going in the eye that just grosses me out but charlton comics was a minor player back then and they had a lot of space and horror books I mean, it's super hero, hero books too, but they got all bought out by um, DC Comics. But this was a book that I had some later issues when I was a kid, but it's called Beyond the Grave. The artwork isn't terrible. It's not the best artwork you've ever seen. Um, I would love to look up who even did this cover. This could have been someone who became famous because it's pretty cool. But I had some issues when I was a little kid of Beyond the Grave. And this was just an awesome. I picked it up for nothing. I mean, ten dollars or fifteen dollars and you just can't beat the satan cover on there like that not a book worth grading but definitely a book to collect love that type of cover got a couple of slab books to look at and you've already seen my gi joe on here this is not particularly expensive um but it is a super cool gi joe book from 1987 by 1987 i had stopped maybe buying gi joe comics and i was long past buying G.I. Joes and toys and anything like that, which is funny because now as I'm old, I buy the things, you know, go back to our youth. But this is a 9.8 of issue number 55. It's Mike Zek cover, right? That's probably Mike Zek cover. Looks like Mike Zek. But everybody unmasking. 
Snake Eyes, Destro, Cobra Commander, and also apparently the significant significance of this is that Grunt retires from G.I. Joe. That's too bad. Larry Hama story. I always called him Larry Hama, but apparently I was correct, and it's Hama. There's a lot of learning how to pronounce people's names here, but when you read a comic book your whole life, how do I know how his name is pronounced? Alex Toth. Toth. Larry Hama. I met Larry Hama. I had him autograph issue number one of G.I. Joe, um, and uh, I love that. So anyway, this is a 9.8 of um, G.I. Joe number 55 with an amazing Mike Zek cover. Like, that's just absolutely stunning. Love that book. Um, so I don't know if I ever owned this originally in 1987. Um, I probably collected G.I. Joe from like 1983 to 85 or something like that. But I might have. Beautiful. Absolutely beautiful book. This is this one I might put in the thumbnail because this book is so not on my radar or anything I would normally buy in this genre of books. I might've talked about before, if you know comic books, superheroes were really big when Superman came out. And then after the war, and after the um, after the war, people really got into the horror books and they really got into romance books and Western books and superheroes kind of died out. And that's why the Silver Age sort of started bringing them back. But for a while, the books just, they were there. Um, I think there was a statistic that somebody told me that the only book that made it through the Golden Age into the Silver Age was uh, Superman, Batman, and Wonder Woman. Everybody else lost their books. They were maybe in compilation books like Brave and the Bold or something like that. But comic the comics just disappeared. Um, comic book heroes disappeared. Oh, they were relegated to backup stories in action comics or backup stories in detective comics. Um, and they really died. So there was big, big, and even into the, 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 the 60s and I think the early 70s, romance was really big. And it's starting to kind of make this weird comeback. And again, I wouldn't normally buy any romance books, but this cover just spoke to me. And I got this book and it is a 7.5, and I almost guarantee it should be better than a 7.5. And this is from 1955, a, a 7.5 from 1955. And it's a file copy. Not super expensive, but you'll see again with this covers. Look at that book. Everybody that I show this to, even if it's just a picture on my phone, says, oh, yeah, that that's a book. But this is called Love Problems, Stories for Every Girl. It's Love Problems and Advice Illustrated. Maybe they're giving you advice in here. I knew heartbreak when I was betrayed by beauty. May of 1955, issue 33, 10 cents from um, Harvey Publications, but says up here, file copy, which I didn't even realize. But this cover is just amazing. Probably the only romance book I'll ever buy, but this is really just hot stuff. The next thing I want to try and get into is I want to try and get a copy of some... Um, Betty and Veronica books, some of the Archie books. I don't, I mean, I read Archie when we were little kids. You had the trade digest and the comics and stuff like that. But apparently there's a whole trend, again, probably not a surprise to most of you, where there are very um, subtle sexual innuendos on the covers of some of these Archie books. Um, I think the big one is Betty and Veronica number 40 or something like that. Um, um, look up Betty and Veronica and just put in Betty and Veronica mousetrap. And the cover is Betty and Veronica in the gym in very skimpy clothing or tight clothing. And they're talking about chasing after Archie. And apparently it's a sexual innuendo on there. And I guess those used to sneak in. And those books can be worth huge money. Again, a, a low grade copy is many hundreds of dollars that I probably can't afford. Um, but I want to pick one up. Do I read Archie or Betty and Veronica? No, but I think that's just a cool uh, avenue of, of collecting. So um that's i think all i wanted to talk about for covers um and i've got some cool covers but i'm going to go back and talk about it. like iron man number one great book and i love iron man but not even a great cover i wouldn't even say the ninja turtle covers is very good the ninja turtles aren't even on it you know what i mean and then what else we got there i mean obviously fantastic four beautiful cover uh, jack kirby with the fantastic car but a lot of words on there i know you're trying to draw the kids in and stuff like that but obviously a great jack kirby avengers number four like it, it's probably one of the most mimicked and uh um odes to that other people do about this type of cover um incredible hulk wolverine pretty cool um fantastic four pretty decent nice galactus up there i like them like lit up in green but covers are really the big draw on a lot of these books in my uh, direction for 
uh, collecting these days. So anyway, I've been Randy at Swarm of Comics. Thank you guys for joining us, and we'll see you next time. And I'm going to do the awkward thing where I look down to stop the recording. But um, please follow me on here. Subscribe, add comments, like the videos, anything like that that I'm supposed to beg for on here. And if you got any advice for good cameras or for anything to do with the videos, um, please feel free to comment and interact. Um, we'll see how long it goes that I answer questions and reply to comments you know when you start you're like oh yeah i want to reply to everybody and like everybody's reply but when i guys when i start getting millions of views i'm just not going to have that time so get it in now while you can still talk to me so anyway signing off this is randy at swarm of comics